Hello lovelies, Dr. Maria is here. Today we're revising chapter 2, Energy and the Environment, Fossil Fuel Formation. Fossil fuels are carbon-based fuels. They're formed over millions of years from the decay of living matter. Coal is formed by plants. Oil and natural gases, they're formed from the sea creatures. Forming of coal. The huge forests grew millions of years ago, covered most of the earth. These vegetations die and they form peat. That peat get compressed between layers of sediments and that under high temperature and pressure, they form coal. So it's peat, vegetation, temperature, time, and pressure, okay? Sorry, that's pressure. Temperature and time, okay, heat, that's the temperature, it will form coal. Formation of oil and natural gases. As we said, they come from marine organisms or sea creatures. Small plants and animals, they die and fall at the bottom of the sea. Their remains are covered by sediments. So the main thing you're going to see here, your main keywords, are sediments, layers, pressure, and temperature over millions of years. These are the same thing. The only difference you're going to say about the oil, natural gas, and coal is that coals are derived from dead plants, while oil, natural gas from marine or aquatic organisms sediments start forming layers they start to change into sandstone under high temperature and pressure heat and pressure turn the remains into crude oil and natural gas and they separate and rise through sandstone filling the pores the rock above oil and gas is impervious non-porous okay so they get trapped underneath them Energy resources and the generation of electricity. The demand of energy is increasing worldwide due to increase in, due to increase in population size, industrialization, urbanization, and improvement of living standards. What are the non-renewable and renewable? Non-renewable are limited, like fossil fuels, like natural gas, and these things. Renewable are unlimited, like tidal, wave, wind, solar powers. So non-renewable like fossil fuels and nuclear gas, they are limited and they take millions of years to be replenished. While renewable like geothermal, hydroelectric, tidal, wave, wind, solar, biofuels, they all can be used over and over again and they can be replenished. Okay, what is the positive impact or what is something that's good about non-renewable? They can be used during any time while renewable can be used at any time. Like the solar powers, they're only available in the morning due to the sun. Nuclear fuels last for centuries and are a good replacement for fossil fuels. However, they are limited. Biofuels may become limited, but it can be renewed by replacing the, the cut down trees with new ones, obtaining the bioethanol and wood. Biogas can be obtained by recycling waste products. How energy sources are used to generate electricity. We need a turbine, a generator, a turbine that rotates, okay, either by gas, steam, or air, and it's connected to the generator. And the generator is the machine that converts that mechanical energy into electrical one. Fossil fuels and biofuels, they produce massive amounts of energies during combustion, burning. They're used to heat water and convert them into steam. And that steam will rotate the turbines, and the turbines are connected to the generator, and that generator will convert the mechanical to electrical energy. Nuclear powers. Uranium, a radioactive element, releases huge amount of energy when nuclear fission, the splitting of an atoms. This energy is used to heat water, produce steam, rotate the turbines, connect it to the generator, and generate electricity. Geothermal. Cold water is pumped under high pressure into the layer of hot rocks. The hot rocks heat them and the hot water will be turned to steam and the steam again will turn the turbine and the turbine will be connected to the generator. And again, wind power. Wind turbines have shafts or the blades that rotate due to wind. The gearbox maximizes the rotation of the shaft, brakes slow down or stops the, the rotor in very windy conditions, preventing damage to the blades. As the turbine rotates, the generator produces electricity. Solar ones use the solar panels in order to generate electricity. Tidal power is the natural rise and fall in the level of water in the area. When the level drops, water is held back 
by tidal buried. That's a small dam. Wave power also uses turbine generator. It uses smaller differences in water levels that are caused by wind. Hydroelectric uses a dam, okay, where water here at the reservoir. They got a small gate that opens it. The water goes down by gravity. It rotates the turbine connected to generator, generate electricity. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Advantages of fossil fuels, they are plenty. They provide job opportunities. Technology used well is well known and method of extraction of extractions are practiced. Disadvantages, carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases will cause pollution, will cause global warming, damages of local areas, limited supply, and they are non-renewable resources. Or it's a type of non-renewable resource. Biofuel, it's renewable, growing plants, uses carbon dioxide, so it's good. And there are plenty. However, carbon dioxide and toxic gases are released when they are burned. A lot of land will be needed, shortage of land for agriculture, increases the food prices and demands, and also removal of natural ecosystem, which will cause reduction by diversity and genetic depletion, okay? Nuclear power does not cause any carbon dioxide emissions. Large amount of energy are produced only from small ones, small amount of fuel, provides job opportunities, disadvantage, risk of radiations, People will relocate, the power plants will take a lot of space, radioactivity waves cannot be recycled since they are active for centuries. Geothermal doesn't produce carbon dioxide, so it doesn't contribute to global warming. It's renewable. However, it's expensive to install, only certain areas are suitable. Wind power doesn't produce carbon dioxide, it's renewable. However, certain locations are suitable for that. Generate electricity depends on the weather, visual impact, and uses large area. Causes also people to relocate, and the blades could kill the birds. Solar power, again, renewable, doesn't emit carbon dioxide, and it's weather dependent. Tidal power, again, it has to do with tidal movements. However, it's specific coastal areas, impact on tourism, impacts on local fishermen. They kill fish, the blades kill fish, and trap them. Wave one, again, the same topic. The limited one is specific areas, needed for specific areas, and not efficient at present. Hydroelectric ones, same words, water can be reused. Again, dams impact the natural flow of water, villagers, and ecosystems. Villages and ecosystems may be destroyed, flooding can happen, anything. Okay. Energy demand, domestic demands, we got for them like the glass houses operation, we got industrial demands like manufacturing, the iron and steel, we got it for transportation, we got it for personal and national wealth, if the, econom if the economy was good, higher employment, more money to spend on luxury items, better infrastructure, better education, better everything, but if it's poor, the families will have less money to spend on luxury items. They'll have to make savings, reduce the use of fuel, reduce any purchases, and decrease in demand for energy. Declining the economy of one country can have a global impact. Reduction in the economy of China meant a worldwide reduction in production of steel, decreases the amount of manufactured goods, and also decreases in the price of oil. Climate. The demand for energy with regard to climate depends over on the country. So people living in temperature climate where it's colder or warmer, they will need more heating or more AC. Okay? And it also depends on the daylight. If fewer hours of daylight, they will switch on their electrical lightings. Okay. Conservation and management of energy. The strategies in order to efficiently use energy or manage the energy is reducing in consumption. Like turn off the appliances when not used, insulation, do double glazing, loft insulation, underfloor insulation, cavity wall insulation, double glazing, triple glazing. Okay, read this. It's it's easy. I just said most of points right now. Energy from waste, reusing existing materials to extract energy from them before they are disposed. In rapid digestion, breakdown of organic matter, the waste food using bacteria. This process can be done in sealed containers. And they release methane. Methane is a greenhouse gas, okay? They're used 
for heating purposes. Household rubbish can be incinerated, mean burned. They produce heat and they can generate electricity from that. What the advantages? Advantages is that they the waste from burning is small in volume and doesn't take up too much space. The disadvantage: the poisonous gas happens during the burning or combustion. Vegetable oil, once used, should be disposed. These oils can be collected and recycled into biofuels suitable for running vehicles. Education. Benefits of technology can be communicated to others, promote new ways of thinking, raise the awareness about global warming, blah, blah, blah. Laws passed by government to make changes rapidly. Stricter building regulation. New constructions must be more energy efficient. That prevents the sales of inefficient types of electrical devices. Also exchange the older devices by new more efficient one. Replacing the older and efficient by new efficient ones. Exfoliating existing energy resources. The type of energy source used depends on social, environmental, and economical factors. The current solution is used is to use the renewable resource as primary and then use fossil fuels. This is a reliable source for industry and household to reduce the amount of fossil fuels used. Transport policies, carpooling, cycling, encouraging car sharing, restricting cars, use electric cars. Developing of new resources. We got fracking. Fracking is obtaining of oil and gases from shale rocks. This, the breakdown of rocks, releases methane. That's a very important point, okay? If they ask you. Water, sand, and chemicals are pumped down. The purpose of that, the water is easy to handle at high pressure. Chemicals to stop the blockage of pipes and sand to keep the cracks of the rocks open. Advantages, access more oil, less pollution, only a smaller hole is used or dug in the ground. However, that hole will cause earthquakes, earth tremors, noise pollution, water pollution because of the chemicals can leak, chemicals and toxins, relocation of people, anything that will make sense. Okay, next we got the impact of oil pollution. Oil pollution, offshore oil extractions and the leakage from rigs, you have to know what causes oil spills, okay? So they can be leaked from rigs, from pipe works or from oil tankers from ships, okay? Effects of oil spills on the habitat. Phytoplankton is going to block sunlight from them so they cannot photosynthesize. The fish, due to shortage in phytoplankton, they're going to die because there's no oxygen and no food. The birds, they're going to ingest it and that's toxic for them. It's gonna cover their wings or feathers, will prevent them to fly and the further they can cause them to die. Mammals. Food source are depleted, the mammals may also swallow that toxic oil. Coating oil will affect their skin. Reefs, like coral reefs, complete devastation in the reefs due to the lack of oxygen. Beaches, the oil will coat the rocks. Animals will be affected and also tourism. Management of oil pollution. We got marple, it's like international law that prevent pollution from ships. Regulation of marble, supervise the transport of oil, oil tankers. Oil tankers must be certified, double held, the tanker design to be double hauled, sorry, double hauled tankers, okay? So that they can reduce oil spillage from them. Minimizing the impact of oil spills, we got floating booms. There are floating barriers that, are, that prevent the oil from spreading further. Detergent sprays break down the large oil spills into smaller ones so they can be easily removed. Skimmers, they clean the water using a material that oil easily attaches to. Okay, so the skimmer is dragged and that cleans the water. And yeah, okay. We and that was it everyone that's chapter two revision and the last video in this revision series i hope it was enough for you and i hope it was sufficient and i mentioned every single point you need to know if you have any doubts please feel free to reach out to me on my telegram link in description and thank you all for watching